Let me check. Live from Las Vegas, it's the Cube covering Interconnect 2017. Brought to you by IBM. Okay, welcome back everyone. Day two, we are here live in Las Vegas for IBM Interconnect. This is SiliconANGLE's theCUBE coverage of IBM's cloud event. Uh, the CEO, Ginny Rometty, was just on stage. We're kicking off wall-to-wall -wall coverage for three days. I'm John Furrier with my co-host Dave Vellante here for all three days. And our next guest is uh, Andy Lin, who's the VP of strategy at Mark III Systems, a uh, 20 plus year IBM Platinum partner, uh, doing some real cutting edge work with Cognitive. As Ginny Rometty said, Cognitive to the core is IBM's core strategy. Data first, enterprise strong is kind of the, the buzzwords. Andy, welcome to theCUBE, appreciate you coming on. Thanks for having me. So obviously, uh, enterprise strong, you know, it's just it's a kind of a whole nother, you know, conversation that we can go deep on, but data first and cognitive of the core is really kind of the things that you guys are really getting into, all kinds of data types, and automating it and making it almost frictionless to move insights out. Mm -hmm. So take a minute to explain what Mark is doing and what your role is with the company. Sure, absolutely. So um, I'm Vice President of Strategy at Mark III, so I work sort of across all our initiatives, especially areas that are emerging. Um, just a little bit about Mark III, just historically for background purposes. So we're a 22-year IBM Platinum partner, as you pointed out. Um, we actually started out in the mid-90s um, actually doing IT infrastructure around the IBM stack at that time. So um, we've sort of been with IBM yeah. over the last 20 years since the beginning. We've sort of grown up throughout the stack as IBM's evolved over the last two decades. Um, about two and a half years ago, we started a digital development unit called Blue Chasm. Uh, and what Blue Chasm does is it basically builds open, digital, and cognitive platforms on the IBM cloud that are run a lot of the services you pointed out. Um, and we basically design it based on use cases that the ecosystem and our clients talk about. Um, and to give you a couple examples, um, one, of the, one of the big ones that we're seeing a lot of interest around is called Video Recon. Uh, Video Recon is a video analytics platform that's API enabled and open at its core. So regardless of where the video comes from, if it's a content management system, if it's a camera, we're able to basically take in that video, basically watch and listen to the video using Watson and some elements of our own intellectual property, and then basically return insights based on what it sees and hears along with timestamps back to the user to actually yeah. take action. I love the name Blue Chasm. It brings up, you know, Jeffrey Moore's crossing the chasm, blue, yes. IBM big, it's big blue, so. You know, it's nice, clever play, the blue chasm, opportunity. So, in your mind, uh, for people watching, um, squint through some of the trends and, and extract out where you see these opportunities, because if you're talking about new opportunities are emerging because of cloud horsepower and compute and storage and all the greatness of cloud, and you got real-time analytics kind of really hitting the mainstream. That's going to, that's highlighted by Internet of Things. You can't go anywhere these days out here about autonomous vehicles, industrial Internet of Things, AI, uh, Mark Benioff was saying, you know, we've seen the movies like Terminator and, and we've all dreamed about AI, so we can kind of get excited about the prospects. So, but this chasm you're talking about, this is where these things that were ungettable before, un unreachable new things, what are those, some of those things that you guys are doing in that chasm? Yeah, so I, I think some of the things that we're doing are basically enabling, like I'll use Video Recon as an example, right? Um, we're enabling a clients to be able to get new insights using basically computer vision, but in an open and accessible way uh, than, than they've never had been able to do before. Uh, vision itself I don't think is new or revolutionary. You know, a lot of folks are doing it, self-driving yeah. cars, et cetera, but um, I think what is new is being able to make it open and easily accessible to the, to the normal enterprise and the normal service provider. Up to now it's been, you know, you've had really had to have your own team of you know, um, really, really deep AI developers or PhDs to be able to, to produce it for your own platform. What we're trying to do is basically democratize that. Yeah. So, uh, to give you an example, some use cases that we're, yeah. we're sort of working on today, um, the ability to do things like read meters and gauges, um, as an example, with a camera. That way you can avoid a situation where somebody has to walk around all the time, you know, look at different things. It could be dangerous. Um, there there could, be, could be issues actually looking at um, what you see from a metering perspective, or to be able to, for instance, for in, in the media entertainment industry or the video production industry, be able to do things like identify shot type to be able to more quickly allow our enterprise users in that particular space to be able to create video content quickly. And, and the underlying theme with, with all this, I think, is really about speed to market and how quickly can you iterate and yeah. please whatever your customer is in that particular space that you're in. So the video recon, so you're your, your videos are searchable, essentially. So, so what do you do? You use Watson natural language processing to sort of translate them, and now of course, of course, you know, NLP is 
maybe, I don't know, 75, 80% accurate. How do you close that gap? Yeah, so um, Video Recon does both visual and audio. So the, the audio portion, you, you are correct. There is some degree of trade-off in accuracy relative to what I think the average human can do today. Uh, assuming the human is focused and able to really tag these videos accurately. So we are able to train it based on things like proper words and things that are enterprise focused. Because I know there, there are a lot of um, different uh, ways that I think you can maybe attack this today from a video analytics perspective. We're focused primarily just on the enterprise solving business problems. With, with video analytics. So, um, you know, taking advantage of as Watson improves, because we do use speech to text at its core on the audio perspective, applying some of our own techniques to basically improve the accuracy of certain words that, that matter most of the enterprise. Um, one of the things we've noticed is it's, it's an entirely a collaborative relationship with our, with, our, with our enterprise clients, but really partners, because what works for well for one may not work well for another. Um, the one thing about cognitive is it really depends on the end user as to if this is a good idea or not, or if this will work for their use case, just based on error, as you pointed out. So to your point, you're, you're ad identifying enterprise use cases and then tuning the system, building solutions, essentially, for those use cases. A a absolutely. Now, yes. you said 22-year IBM Platinum Partner, so right. you obviously started well before this so-called digital transformation. Yes. Um, you see digital transformation as, as you know, revolutionary, or is it more of an evolution of your business? I would definitely say it's an evolution. I think, you know, a lot of the industry uh, buzzwords out there all around, you know, um, transformation or transition, but for us it's been completely additive. You know, at the end of the day, we're just doing what our clients want, you know, and we're still continuing the, the core part of our business around modernizing and optimizing IT infrastructure, tech stacks in the data center, also infrastructure service in the cloud, um, also up through the middleware is still really as strong as ever. Um, and in fact, that business has actually been very much reinforced by some of these capabilities that we brought in on the digital development side. Because at the end of the day, you know, clients may have a digital unit and they may have you know, IT, but they're really viewed sort of all in the same. A lot of people try to put them in two different buckets, bimodal or whatever you want to use, yeah. but you know, inevitably, you know, clients just see a business problem they want to address, yeah. and they're saying, how can I address it the fastest and the most effectively as, as relative, relative to what their stakeholders want? Um, and we just realized early on that we had to have that development capability, be able to build platforms, but also guide our clients. If they don't want one of our platforms, if they don't want Video Recon or our Cognitive Call Center platform, that's perfectly fine. We're more than happy to guide them on how to build something similar for their developers with our developers relative to their tech stack, you know, hopefully on the IBM cloud. Andy, one of the things you're pointing out that I think is worth highlighting is the digital transformation buzzword, which has been around for a few years now, really is in mainstream right now. It People is. are really working hard to figure this out. We're seeing the disruption on the business model side. You mentioned speed and time to market. That's agility. That's not just a technical development term anymore. Uh, it's actually business model. It's business related. But there's two axes of, of things going on. There's the under the hood, heavy lifting stuff that goes on around getting stuff digitally to work. That's IT, security, and you know, Ginny Remedy talks about a lot of it on stage. That's being enterprise grade or enterprise strong. The other one is this digitization of the real world, right? Mm -hmm. So that's creative, that requires insights, that requires kind of a different, uh, it's actually probably maybe more fun for some people, but I mean, it depends on who your profile is, but <laughs> you have kind of two spectrums. Cool and relevant and exciting and intoxicating, creative, user experience driven. You mentioned reading meters. That's yeah. the analog world, that's actually yes space, that's the world, that's like, you got the sky, you got the meter, you got yeah. physical impressions. This is the digitization of our world. What's your perspective? How do you talk to customers when they say, hey, I want to digitize my business? Mm -hmm. How does it go? What do you say? I mean, do you break it down into those axes? Do you go, uh, do they see it that way? Can you share some color on this digital transformation of digitizing business? Yeah, so, I mean, it really depends on, I think, it, normally it has to do with uh, in, uh, interacting with some other stakeholders in a certain way. You know, I think um, from our perspective, it, it really is about you know how they want to interface. And most of the time, you pointed out speed. Speed, I think, is the number one reason why people are, are um, you know doing the digital transformation. It's not really about cost or these other factors. It's how quickly can I adjust my business model so I can win in the marketplace? Um, and you know, I, I think I pointed this earlier, but like. Um, you know, IOT is huge now. It, it covers what I call three of the five senses in my mind. It covers basically um, touch, smell, and, and taste in many ways. And, and for us, I think we're basically trying to help them even get beyond IOT with, with video. Video really covers you know, sight and hearing as well. It covers all the five senses. And then you take that and figure out 
how do I digitize that experience and be able to allow you to interact with your stakeholders, whether it be your customers, your suppliers, uh, or your partners out in the marketplace. And then, and then based on that, we'll take these building blocks on how we you know, extend the experience and work with them on their specific use cases. To so you got to ingest the data, which is the, you know, the, the, the images or data coming in. Correct. Then you got to prep it and make it available for insights. And then produce them in re like really fast. Yep. <laughs> That's hard. It's it not is, trivial. Yeah. No, it is not. It's not a <laughs> trivial problem. Yeah, absolutely. And I think you know, there's a lot of opportunity here okay. uh, in the space over the next, I think, two to, to two to five years. But you're absolutely right. I mean, yeah. it is a, it is a challenge. And I want to get your thoughts too, and if you can share your reaction to some of the trends around machine learning, for instance, that's really kind of fueling yeah. this democratization you mentioned. In the old days, it was really hard. There's kind of a black art to, to machine learning or unique special specialties, and even data science at, at one level was really really hard. Now you have common people doing things with visualization. What's the same with machine learning? I mean, you got more data sets coming in. Do you see that trend relevant to what you guys are working on in Blue Chasm? Yeah, ab absolutely. Um, I think at the core of it, and this wasn't our plan initially three years ago, we didn't realize that this would happen, but every single one of the platforms or prototypes or, or apps we've built, they all incorporate some degree of machine learning, deep learning within its core. Uh, and this is primarily just driven by, I think, what uh, to give a client a unique platform or a unique service on the market. Because much of the base digitization, I mean, Ginny likes to talk a lot about you know, the, the key to being differentiating yourself in the digital world is being cognitive. And um, we've seen this really play out in practice. And, and I think what, what's changed, as you pointed out, is that it's easily accessible now to sort of the, the, the common man, as, as, I, as I put it. In, in years past, you really had to have people that are highly specialized, you build your own product, but now through open source. There's building blocks out there, absolutely. you can just take an open source yeah. library and say, hey, and then tweak the machine learning. At, yeah, absolutely, and, and the ramp up time has come down you know, dramatically, even for our developers, I'm just watching them work. I mean, the, the prototype to Video Recon was built over the course of a weekend by one of our developers. He just came in one Monday and said, you know, is this, is this interesting? Yeah, exactly, and we were like, yes, I think this is interesting. Well, this is so. the whole inspiration thing that I talk about the creativity. I mean, this is the two axes, right? You try to do that in the old days, I yeah. got to get a server provision, oh, I'm done. Right. You know, I'm going to go have a beer, whatever. I mean, there's almost an abandonment going on. We talked to Indiegogo yesterday about how they're funding companies. Yeah. You have this new creative action. Mm -hmm. So you guys are seeing that. Any, any other examples you can share in terms of color around this kind of innovation? Yeah, so um, we at Blue Chasm, we try to let our developers sort of have free reign over what they like to create. So Video Recon was spawned literally by us on a side project. You know, as with a lot of companies, it was you know a, a platform that sort of evolved into a commercial product almost by accident, right? And um, we've had others that have been anchored by like what clients have done, but um, like around the cognitive call center, which basically takes phone calls that are recorded and then basically transcribes and make them easily searchable for audit reasons, training reasons, et cetera. Same kind of idea. Um, we built things around like uh, cognitive drones. A lot of folks are trying to do things with drones. Drones themselves aren't really not novel anymore, but being able to utilize them to collect data in unique ways, I think you know, that industry is definitely evolving. Um, we've built other things like uh, what I call the Minority Report Board after the scene in the movie where the, the board sort of looks at you and then based on what it sees of you, a different data points, uh, it shows you an ad or shows you some piece of um, visual yeah. content to allow you to interact. Yeah. I mean, these are, these are examples, you know, we have others, but um, you know, we've just seen like in this organization, if we allow creativity to sort of rank, you know, have free reign, we're able yeah. to sort of bring it back in along with some of the strengths of Core Mark 3 about being able to I mean, the cognitive is really things. interesting. It's a programmatic approach to life, and if you think about it, it's like if you have this collective intelligence with the data, you can offer an augmented reality experience yes. to anybody now based upon what you're doing. Absolutely, so I mean, I think that the toughest part, I think right now is figuring out which of the opportunities to pursue because um, there are so many out there um, and everyone has some interest in it in some degree. You know, you have to figure out how to prioritize about you know, which, which are the ones you want to address first and in what yeah. order because what we've noticed is that a lot of these are building blocks that lead to, lead to other greater and greater platform concepts and Part of the challenge is figuring out what order you want to actually build these into it. And, and through you know, microservices, through containerization, all these you know, awesome um, 
uh, evolutions as far as like with cloud and infrastructure technology, you're really able to piece together these pieces to build amazing things. The cloud really native stuff is booming right now. It's really yeah. fun to watch the microservices, Kubernetes, this orchestration, oh, okay. composability is Absolutely. just kicking the ass. And all your clients are basically becoming software companies. They're taking your services and building out their own SaaS capabilities. And, right, right? W w without a doubt. I mean, um, you know, the cloud native and container, container revolution's been um, significant for us. I mean, we, we added the audio component to Video Recon based on some of the work we've been doing on the call center side. It was almost by accident, and we were able to really put them together in a day because we were able to basically easily compose the overall platform at that time, or the prototype of the platform at that time, just by linking together those services. So right. we see this as a pattern moving forward. Andy, thanks for coming on theCUBE. Really appreciate it. In the quick 30 seconds, what are you doing here at the show? What are you guys talking about? What's some of the activity? Coolest thing you're seeing? Share some insight, what's going on here in Las Vegas. Share some perspective. Yeah, absolutely. So um, we have a booth here um, in Vegas. We're uh, demoing some of the platforms we talked about, Video Recon, Cognitive Call Center. We're at booth 687, which is uh, toward the center back of the Expo Center. Um, we have four breakouts that we'll be doing as well, talking about some of these concepts, as well as some of our projects that involve you know, modernization of the data center as well. So the, the true, what I call yeah. IBM full stack. And for the folks that aren't here about. watching, is there a the website address? Where can they go to get more information? Yeah, absolutely. You can uh, go to mark3sys, M-A-R-K-triple-I-S-Y-S.com, which is our, our website. Um, if you want to learn a little bit more about Video Recon, you can go to videorecon.io. We have a very simple demo page, but um, you know, if you're interested in learning more, or you want to explore if we can accommodate your specific use case, um, please feel free to reach out to me. Um, also, uh, Mark3 Systems, M-A-R-K, triple I, uh, Systems uh, at Twitter as well, um, and, and I can. Well, you know, we're going to follow up with you. We're going to get all of our cube videos into the cognitive era. You'll be seeing us pinging you online for that. Yeah. Love the video recon, just great. Blue cats, um, great, uh, great initiative. Congratulations on that. Thank you. Thanks for coming on. This is theCUBE live here in Las Vegas. Day two of coverage, wall to wall. I'm John Furrier, Dave Vellante. Stay with us, more great interviews after this short break. <laughs>